Welcome to God's Playbook with your host, Father Rico Passero. It's a 20, 10, 5, touchdown! Touchdown! Let's play ball. Happy Monday, friends. Welcome back to God's Playbook. We continue our study of the last part of John chapter 8. In this last passage, what I'm calling the battle royale here between Jesus and the authorities, they do not understand what Jesus is talking about. And it's important for us to understand what Jesus is talking about. So today's passage we're going to study together is um, 8, 31 to 59. So we read in the scripture, Jesus then said to the Jews who believed in him, If you remain in my word, you will truly be my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How can you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Amen, amen, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave of sin. A slave does not remain in a household forever, but a son always remains. So if a son frees you, then you will be truly free. I know that you are descendants of Abraham, but you are trying to kill me because my word has no room among you. I tell you what I have seen in the Father's presence. Then do what you have heard from the Father. They answered and said to him, Our father is Abraham. Jesus said to them, If you were Abraham's children, you would be doing the works of Abraham. But now you are trying to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I have heard from God. Abraham did not do this. You are doing the works of your father. So they said to him, We are not illegitimate. We have one father, God. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I came from God and am here. I did not come on my own, but he sent me. Why do you not understand what I am saying? Because you cannot bear to hear my word. You belong to your father, the devil, and you willingly carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in truth, because there is no truth in him. When he tells a lie, he speaks in character because he is a liar and the father of lies. But because I speak the truth, you do not believe me. Can any of you charge me with sin? If I am telling the truth, why do you not believe me? Whoever belongs to God hears the words of God. For this reason you do not listen, because you do not belong to God. The Jews answered and said to him, Are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and are possessed? Jesus answered, I am not possessed. I honor my father, but you dishonor me. I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks it, and it is he is the one who judges. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever keeps my word will never see death. So the Jews said to him, Now we are sure that you are possessed. Abraham died, as did the prophets. Yet you say, Whoever keeps my word will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham who died? Or the prophets who died? Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is worth nothing. But it is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say, He is our God. You do not know him, but I know him. And if I should say that I do not know him, I would be like you, a liar. But I do know him, and I keep his word. Abraham, your father, rejoiced to see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and you have seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, before Abraham came to be, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid and went out of the temple. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
So the battle royale, as I say. Why can we not understand that when Jesus speaks, he means what he says? This struggle to understand who Jesus is is something that the people in today's passage are struggling with and sometimes is the struggle of people today as well. Why are we struggling? Can we not just come to believe and ask God to strengthen our faith? Faith in the Lord Jesus, who has come to redeem the world and has redeemed the world. Interesting part of the passage. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. How many times has that been quoted in legal terms, in courtrooms, or when you're talking to somebody? The truth will set you free. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So indeed, he is truth. He is the one who comes to free us. He speaks of it in this passage, and he backs it up with his actions. The Jewish people who are struggling with him refuse to believe and listen to what Jesus is saying. Interesting how he uses Abraham as a means to connect for them. For the Jewish people, they have five main prophets. Abraham, Noah, Moses, and the other prophets they see as significant. Jesus is trying to connect the dots and make the connection back to Abraham to show that God was there long before Abraham was. And so as a result, friends, he's trying to help the Jewish people to understand that he is the fulfillment of what Abraham believed. Jesus shares with them that he means what he says and he will back up his words by his actions. By referring to himself as I am, then he is equating himself to the same as the Father. This is, in the words and minds of the people, blasphemy, though we know that that is not true. Jesus spoke clearly and truthfully. He is God. He existed long before Abraham did because God has no beginning and no end. The Alpha and the Omega. And as a result, friends, we need to realize this too for our lives. He knows better. God is in charge. God is stronger than ourselves. God is bigger than our ideas. God is infinitely more intelligent than whatever we can come up with. So as a result, we just need to question less and believe more. Jesus does not beat around the bush. He is very clear in speaking of who he is. So may we see this passage and realize that the connection to Abraham, who's seen as our father in faith, Jesus using him as an example illustrates the point that Abraham came to know who he is. And so the people at that time and all of us should also come to know who Jesus is too. Jesus is using the testimony of the Father. Jesus is using the example of Abraham. Jesus is using his own words to further prove that those who are discerning faith may come to know him. May they come to know him as who he really is. May we come to know him for who he truly is. This battle royale is not meant to be a fight where Jesus is playing tough with the people, but rather he's inviting them to enter in. Jesus is trying to soften their hearts with these encouraging words to bring clarity to their confusion, to bring faith to their doubts, and to bring hope to our hearts. 
Thankfully, Jesus is the Messiah. Thankfully, Jesus has redeemed us. Thankfully, Jesus continues to shower his mercy and love upon us, friends. This brings us great hope and great joy. So as we continue in the month of November, friends, and we pray for those who have died, may we be inspired by this passage. May we come to know Jesus more intimately and realize that indeed he is who he says he is. For God's Playbook, friends, I'm Father Rico. God loves you and so do I. If you like what you hear, please consider supporting us using any of our affiliate links in the description below via Buzzsprout, Ko-Fi, or GoFundMe. Thanks, and God bless.